Look, y'all need to understand something. Chat GPT, all of this artificial intelligence that we're seeing come onto the market, Google, they now have their own version of Chat GPT. They're calling it Bard AI. All of these different technologies that are so intelligent, that can do things that we never imagined a computer would be able to do. I, I saw an article on Instagram, multiple articles on Instagram, that said that Chat GPT was put through a software engineering technical interview and that Chat GPT passed that interview. If you, let's put that into perspective. If you were to pass that same interview, you would be making multiple six figures per year. Chat GPT is already lapping us. Things that took us years of schooling. People go to school for years to learn how to become, um, you know, one of the top software engineers. They go to school for years to acquire that skill. Chat GPT is, is lapping us and is laughing while they're doing it. Like, it is insane. And now we see Google, they're entering this arena as well. And they have their own version called Bard AI. And let me just take a step back. If you've never used Chat GPT, Go use ChatGPT. Anybody can use ChatGPT. I don't think you have to pay for it yet, but I think it's coming to where you're going to have to pay for it. But I think they still have a free version. Go use it. Go ask it to do something. Go ask it to write um, an essay. Go ask it to do research. Ask it to do anything. I think you'll be very shocked and surprised and probably, you know, frightened of how much ChatGPT actually knows about us. And I think ChatGPT knows a lot more, but I think, yo, ChatGPT, I feel like it's just playing dumb. Like, I, I really think that this is an ultimate pathway to our destruction. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. I think that's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. We might look at these companies, right? We might see uh, chat GPT and we, we might see all of these things happening and we might be like, yo, this is crazy. We've we've never seen this, this, you know, technology before. We never knew that this could could happen. This has to be new, right? Well, the Bible said there's the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. The technology. At the surface level, this technology might look like something that we've never seen before. But at the core of it, we've seen it for, for thousands of years. We've seen this for thousands of years. There's nothing new under the sun. At the core of, the, of what this technology is, it's another attempt by human beings to try to be God. That's what it is. Humans are trying so hard to be God. And by using technology, humans think that they can create some type of eternal life for themselves. That this is listen how this is how arrogant we are that we believe that we can create eternal life for ourselves. We didn't create any of this. Everything that you see all around us right now, we had zero percent role in the creation of it. But somehow we think that we could figure out a way to live forever. And there's actually um, a very well-respected individual within this whole space of artificial intelligence um, who says that we're actually on track to reach that point in seven years. Some reports say by 2030, other reports are saying by 2045, and this is fairly recent stuff. This article just came out March 13th of this year. Um, but it says humans are on, are on track to achieve immortality in seven years. And this is according to, like I said, a very well-respected individual within the space. Now, I don't know too much about this guy, but I know that there are a lot of people that believe that his research and in his opinion uh, in regard to this matter is substantial. Like I said, I don't know. I don't really know this dude, right? 
But apparently this guy, he's a computer scientist, he's an author, and an inventor, and a futurist. And this is the same guy that believes either by 2030 or, you know, somewhere between 2030 and 2045, we're going to reach a point to where we're going to be, we're going to become singular with technology. And this is a very, very important. And I want to show you this video, just a clip of it, because he's going to be talking about um, what it means to be uh, singular with technology, but also his idea of God. Because you know, these people know what's up, man. They know what's up. I think everybody deep down inside, they know that God is real. Now, whether or not you want to submit yourself to him is a whole nother story. But I think deep down inside, we all have an imprint on our heart, in our spirit, in our soul that tells us that God is real, right? I just want to touch on singularity real quick because this is a very, very interesting concept. And then I'll show you what he has to say about God and about, you know, human existence um, artificially for eternity and all that kind of stuff. But singularity, it's a very interesting term that essentially means that humans and technology are going to merge and become one. And what that means is that if technology can, you know, live on whatever that means if technology can live on then if we merge ourselves with technology then we can live on as well now what that looks like he's going to explain that in this video but it's just so interesting to me that this is what people are chasing this is what people are chasing an artificial version of eternal life that is fake. That is apart from God. Do you think, just humor me for a second. Humor me for a second and then we'll watch this video. Do y'all think, hypothetically, and y'all know what side I'm on. I'm on team Jesus. You know who I'm rocking with. But hypothetic, hypothetically, if scientists were able to merge humans and technology, and let's say, for example, Maybe humans were able to live for another 100, 200, 300 years, right? Do you think during that time of prolonged life, artificial life, that is, do you think during that time of prolonged life, do you think people are going to be getting closer to God? Or do you think they're going to be drifting further and further away from God? I think this mixture, if it happens... And there's, a, there's people who believe that this is a real potential. If this happens, this is not going to draw people closer to God. It's going to, you know, it's going to push people further and further away from him. But everyone thinks that, hey, if you're living longer, you're going to be happier. But it's actually grace that God allows us to die. To, to get rid of, of this sinful flesh that we're living in and enter into our glorified bodies. But people don't understand that. I want to show you this video real quick. Um, it's just a few minutes. It's a 10-minute video, but I'm not going to show you the whole video. I'm just going to show you just the, the key and, and important parts. And we're going to start at this part right here. During the singularity, Kurzweil predicts that human life will be irreversibly transformed and that humans will transcend the limitations of our biological bodies and brain. He looks beyond the singularity to say that the intelligence that will emerge will continue to represent the human civilization. Further, he feels that future machines will be human, even if they are not biological. Kurzweil claims once- Did you hear that? I know the audio is on 1.25, so if it sounds like it's faster, it is faster. I, I sped it up. Did you hear what he said? Kurzweil, the same dude who thinks that we're going to be living forever. This dude Kurzweil, he said that future machines will be human. But listen to what he, he said. He feels that future machines will be human, even if they are not biological. He feels that fu future machines will be human, even if they're not biological. So somehow a robot who was not born 
from a, a, a male and a female relationship, because that's the only way you make babies is with a male and a female. Somehow, if a robot is created and is given this artificial intelligence, they're suddenly human. This is what they want you to believe is going to be a, a, a good life in the future. This is the level of goodness that humans can conceive in our own understanding. I don't want to live in no world where we got Wally rolling around and now I got to look at Wally. Y'all if y'all don't know who Wally is, go watch the movie and Wally. I got I got to look at Wally and treat Wally like Wally's a human. I'm not trying to live in a world like that. Y'all think that I don't want that. I want I want what Jesus has. But let's continue this video. Kurzweil claims once non-biological intelligence predominates the nature of human life will be radically altered. There will be radical changes in how humans learn, work, play, and wage war. Kurzweil envisions nanobots which allow people to eat whatever they want while remaining thin and fit, provide copious energy, fight off infections or cancer, replace organs and augment their brains. Eventually people's bodies will contain so much augmentation they'll be able to alter their physical manifestation at will. Kurzweil this is what I'm talking about. Y'all be saying, oh, this is new. We've never seen this before. Oh, my gosh. Like, this. I know most of y'all don't like this type of, you know, technology that's coming out because you can see right through it. You can see how demonic it is. You can see the true intention behind it. But the majority of the world wants this to happen. Because y'all just want to play God. I don't want to play God. I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I don't know how this how air is in my lungs. I don't know how I'm talking and noise is coming out of my mouth. I don't know anything. I don't want to play God. I don't want to have the ability to heal my own body through these nanobots and, and through me having this neural link in my brain and I can tell my 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 broken leg to fix it to fix itself and it will be healed. Do y'all not see what these people are trying to do? They trying to slide it right underneath the rug like it ain't nothing. Let's continue. Will says the law of accelerating returns suggests that once a civilization develops primitive mechanical technologies, it is only a few centuries before they achieve everything outlined in the book, at which point it will start expanding outward, saturating the universe with intelligence. Since people have found no evidence of other civilizations, Kurzweil believes humans are likely alone in the universe. Thus Kurzweil concludes it is humanity's destiny to do the saturating, enlisting all matter and energy in the process. As for individual identities during these radical changes, Kurzweil suggests people think of themselves as an evolving pattern rather than a specific collection of molecules. Kurzweil says evolution moves towards greater complexity, greater elegance, greater knowledge, greater intelligence, greater beauty, greater creativity, and greater levels of subtle attributes such as love. He says that these attributes, in the limit, are generally used to describe God. That means, he continues, that evolution is moving towards a conception of God and that the transition away from biological roots is in fact a spiritual undertaking. Kurzweil does not include an actual written timeline of the past and... Did y'all hear that? Did y'all... Hold on. I need y'all to listen to this part again. Greater creativity and greater levels of subtle attributes such as love. He says that these attributes, in the limit, are generally used to describe God. That means, he continues, that evolution is moving towards a conception of God and that the transition away from biological roots is in fact a spiritual undertaking. The transition away from biological roots is actually a spiritual undertaking. Am I hearing that correctly? Am I, am I interpreting this correctly? It, are, are, are they trying to say that by us becoming one with with robots and technology and artificial intelligence, that that is more godlike? Is that what they're trying to say? That by us merging and becoming this half human, half robot, artificially intelligent, whatever, that that is actually closer to being like God than our current form. Y'all need to pay attention. This is what's happening. This is this is what they want. But let's just continue. I think it's almost over. It's almost over. So stick with me. 
Kurzweil does not include an actual written timeline of the past and future, as he did in the Age of Intelligent Machines and the Age of Spiritual Machines. However, he still makes many specific predictions. Kurzweil writes that by 2010 a supercomputer will have the computational capacity to emulate human intelligence, and by around 2020 this same capacity will be available for $1,000. After that milestone he expects human brain scanning to contribute to an effective model of human intelligence by the mid-2020. These two elements will culminate in computers that can pass the Turing test by 2029. By the early 2030 the amount of non-biological computation will exceed the capacity of all living biological human intelligence. Finally the exponential growth in computing capacity will lead to the singularity. Kurzweil spells out the date very clearly. I set the date for the singularity, representing a profound and disruptive transformation in human capability, as 2045. The public availability of AI information can have both advantages and disadvantages. On the one hand, it may lead to greater accessibility and use of the technology, which could result in new and innovative applications that benefit society. On the other hand, there are also concerns about the ethical use of AI and the potential negative impact it could have, especially as the technology continues to evolve and advance. If you reach... <laughs> I mean... I don't know what more y'all want me to say, like... Us becoming singular with technology is us achieving the true state of spirituality. What did the dude say? I don't, yo, I don't want this artificial version of life that they're creating for us. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Especially not here. Not anywhere, actually. I, I don't want it at all. I want nothing to do with it. I want nothing to do with it. All these people are chasing, are 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 spending all of this, all, all, all their resources, their 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 money, their time, their energy. They're spending all of these resources in in order to try to create something that will never truly be what they want it to be. When what they actually want is what God has to offer to them freely, all they have to do is put their faith in him, believe in Jesus, believe in the finished work of the cross, seek a relationship, but <laughs> they want to go ahead and try to make it on their own. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments. Uh, subscribe if you have not already. Make sure you turn on post notifications. Um, yeah, man. I'm out.